So we continue our course. Right now we are in the topic called angles and uh, we have given a definition of something we don't even know whether it exists but if it exists it will be called a right angle. So whenever we have two adjacent angles so two adjacent angles formed by a straight line and the ray and these two angles for instance alpha and beta are congruent to each other alpha is congruent to beta then each of them is called a right angle is called a right angle and the question is, do they exist? We will call it, we will make a theorem, we will follow the theorem. A right angle exists. I hope you still remember this symbol means existence. Mm. How shall we prove it? Mm. We will construct a right angle. So, proof. Proof. The proof will be the following. Mm. Let there be a straight line in a plane. Let L be a straight line. I forgot which one pencils can be trusted. L is a straight line. In the plane. And let point A be located in one half planes into which L separates the whole plane. And let's perform so I, I will start the proof. Let A be a point in the left half plane formed by line A. I didn't have to call it left half plane, I could have called it, I could have given it a name, I would have given it a notation, but I think left and right is good enough, it's left half plane, it's as good as any other notation, right half plane, right? Uh, let's perform what we call isometry of type 3 so it is an isometry that moves right half plane on the left half plane and vice versa and leaves the line L stationary leaves the line L stationary mm. some people ask me whether line L uh, stationary means it can move along itself it's still when, when it moves along itself it's it's a mapping of line L onto itself uh, the answer is it must be an identical mapping it is it stays stationary each point of the line preserves its its position on the plane it does not move along itself so I will perform this isometry and as a result of this isometry, there will be point A prime, which is the image of point A. Let A prime be the image of A under this isometry. By a 
axiom one we can join a a prime Draw line A A prime. We can do it by axiom one. There will be exactly one line. It will cut L. It will cut L at some point. Let's give it name L. At some Let uh, let's choose um, let's choose points on on, on this rays uh, form emanating from point M on line A. Uh, suppose this point I will call B, and this one I will call C. Let B C B points on A, and none of them with point M. Then I can see that as a result of isometry, I will start writing here, as a result of the isometry we perform, what happens with angle A, M, B? Angle A, M, B is transformed into angle into angle a prime m b hence therefore hence I will keep writing here don't have any other room Hence, angle A M B is congruent to angle A prime M B. This angle, and they are supplements of each other. Right? How do we know they are supplements? Because they they have two sides extending to each other with a straight line A prime. Right? Therefore, each of them is a right angle. That's our triumph. We have proved that right angles exist. Each of them is a right angle. And that's what you are going to prove. That there exist supplementary angles that are congruent to each other. We also say in cases like this that in cases like this we say that lines A, A prime and L are perpendicular to each other. words to each other are usually omitted or we can say perpendicular to each other we have dropped it's a terminology dropped a perpendicular which we often denote like this it's a good notation for a perpendicular two lines perpendicular to each other from point A onto line L. Drop the perpendicular, it's a terminology. The question is, can we drop can we drop another perpendicular from A onto L I mean what, what I mean 
limit another. So it will differ. AM. Can we do it? Can we drop another perpendicular? Can we just, you know? Uh, I erase all this stuff and I have again point A and line L and I will drop a perpendicular and I will have here some other point A prime prime. Can we do it? Is it possible? Can we have it? Mm. I don't know yet. Mm. So far nothing seems to prevent us from getting into this situation. And um, maybe it can happen. I suspect it will not be possible, but we still have to prove it. And we will postpone this proof till later. Postpone proving it. We are not ready yet. We need to acquire a few more tools, a few more skills. Yeah? Can we fight this dragon? No, we still have to find this magic sword. Otherwise, we cannot kill the dragon. So, okay, we will postpone it, we will find the magic sword, and then we will prove that there is only one perpendicular that can be dropped from a, from a point onto a line. Uh, also, you know, when, when two lines are perpendicular, when two lines are perpendicular, we can also view one of the lines as obtained by, as the term says, erecting a perpendicular from a point on a line. So, you can view, if, if you have this line A, or let's say, I, I give a name to this line, a, B, some points on this line, and from some point C, I will draw a line perpendicular to this line, and we know it must be possible because right angles exist. Uh, so this is point C. Yes, that uh, I will I will give name to this line. R small like ray. R is a perpendicular. You can replace perpendicular perpendicular long word yes, with this symbol. Erected to the line AB from point C. Now the question is, can we erect more perpendiculars? It's a plural, yes, perpendicular, perpendiculars from C to line AB. The answer is no, and we will prove it. Theorem. Not more than one perpendicular can be erected from an interior point. should better say in a different order, but I will not write. Can be erected to a line 
from an interior point of this line. So C is the interior point of the line. It lies, it lies on the line. So how are we going to prove it? Proof by contradiction, by reduction, ad, reduction ad absurdum. Suppose there are two perpendiculars erected from C to line AB. I give them names. I can mark some points here. C, D, and another one, C, E. C, D, and C, E. Suppose there are two perpendiculars. Then, then, because um, since C, D is a perpendicular, CD being perpendicular to AB implies that this angle and this blue angle are both right angles. Angle ACE, angle ACE equals angle BCE. And each of them equals to the right angle, right? The fact that, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, I, I have to uh, correct because I wrote A, C, E, and B, C, E. I consider this perpendicular C, not C, D, but C, E. It's correct if you write any notes. C, E perpendicular to A, B implies this. Now CD perpendicular, CD perpendicular to AB implies that ACD, angle ACD, let's mark the most of these angles, the red pencil, ACD, I will mark like this, is congruent to angle BCD. Angle ACD is congruent to angle BCD because each of them is must be a right angle because these are perpendiculars. Now, at the same time, I can say, at the same time, you may not like that I write a lot of words, you are not used to the idea that there are many words in mathematics. There are words, of course, you have to write these words, you have to express yourself properly. Don't overdo it. You can write short sentences, try to make your expressions concise, but uh, you will have to write. At the same time, this blue angle I can see is, is lesser than, than this right, red angle, yes? I will say angle ACE is less than angle ACD, which is congruent to angle BCD, another right a red angle, which is BCD, which is less than angle BCE. So angle ACE is less than angle, so angle ACE, I can say thus, angle ACE is less than angle BCE, which contradicts the hypothesis. 
each of them is right. Thus we have a right Thus we have arrived to a contradiction and the contradiction proves that so there is a contradiction which means that this suggestion about two perpendiculars or maybe more perpendiculars uh, emanating from the same point C or erect at the same point C uh, cannot exist. Two distinct perpendiculars cannot exist. Uh, let's proceed. Mm -hmm. Actually, mm -hmm. there is not much more stuff interesting about angles. One of the Theorems which is often mentioned when people deal with angles. And this is the result that is often used, very, very often used in considering angles. Concerns the so called vertical angles. I will formulate it right away as a theorem. First of all, what are vertical angles? Whenever we have two lines intersecting at a certain point, I will mark angles here. Alpha, this will be beta, this will be gamma, and this will be delta. Alpha, beta are vertical. Gamma and delta are also vertical angles. Theorem Vertical angles are congruent. It's a very simple theorem. It's a very simple theorem. This result which is used very often. Yes? The proof trivial of the, of the proof this is alpha this is delta and this is beta and this is the point at which they all are coming from so alpha beta are vertical angles that prove they are congruent we will use so called direct you know there are direct proofs and proof by contradiction direct proof and then you start with something which is true and then conclude what you need. So it is a direct proof. It's an example of a direct proof. Alpha and delta are supplementary angles. They extend each other, they extend each other into a straight line. Alpha plus delta equals two right angles. Beta plus delta is also two right angles. So therefore, we conclude that alpha is congruent to beta. That's it. At the end of the proof, we often write these magic letters. Quod erat demonstratum, which means in Latin, what was required to be what was required to be shown, demonstrandum shown, yeah? demonstrate. Quote uh, error demonstrandum. People often write this abbreviation. Some people are used to the idea at the end of the proof. They draw a little rectangle like this. It's also acceptable. But make sure that you indicate somehow that the proof is finished. 
I think that would be all, almost all so far about the angles. We will also need to consider the, the notion of a central angle. small subsection central angles what is a central angle? a central angle is an angle formed by two radii in a circle when we place the vertex of the angle at the center of the circle yeah. this angle is central. This angle alpha, for instance. Or I can say the center will be not at O, A, B. This angle is central. Angle A, O, B. Or angle alpha. I write the symbol of congruence. It is the same angle. This is the central. The central angle intercepts arc AB or uh, people often say subtends arc AB. Suppose you have some other central angle. Somewhere This is not properly. The pictures must be realistic. You cannot rely on the realism of these pictures for proofs. You cannot bring up argument like, don't you see yourself? What is the proof here? No. You have to prove everything by appealing to axioms. Mm. I don't like this as well. Why they don't like it? Because it looks like this blue line and black line extend each other into a straight line. No, not necessarily. So I will keep this picture. This picture is good enough. And this will be point C and this will be point D. Uh, I want to prove the result. Theorem. If two angles are congruent the corresponding arcs are congruent if alpha is congruent to beta then arc AB is congruent to arc CD so whenever we have central angles when angles are congruent, the corresponding arcs are congruent. How do we prove it? Mm. Let's perform proof. Proof. Mm. Apply type 2 isometry. You know what is type 2 isometry. It's rotation. that will rotate the whole this sector and also angle of course uh, angle C O D till uh, O C falls on the O A. Of course, the result of this C will fall onto A. Point C when you rotate, yes, rotate through certain angle, this angle. 
you, you know type two isometry you can you can rotate one ray in, in, around until it coincides with another ray from the same uh, from the same point from the same vertex yes uh, c will fall onto a Since both OC and OA equals to the radius of the circle by axiom number three by the compass postulate, you can lay off exactly one segment on a given ray congruent to a given segment. Yes. So each of these segments OA, OB, OC, OD is congruent to the radius. So C will fall exactly at A. I will call it C prime, the image of C. Yes. Since alpha is congruent to beta, um, O D falls on the O B and D on the B. You don't have to prove it again because it will be just the same consideration as C falling on to A. So you can just say similarly. In cases like this you don't want to repeat the same proof twice. You just say similarly this happens. You can write this word here. Similarly to the above. Then what do we have? What the situation do we have? This is point O. This is sector A O B. Also at the same point we have C prime. At the same point we have D prime, right? Images of points C and D, they arrived here. Uh, now let's prove that arc CD falls entirely onto arc AB. Which means uh, they coincide as a result of isometry. Now we can prove by contradiction. Suppose I will draw this arc CD. Suppose some point, give it a name, some point here, M, M of arc CD does not fall onto AB, onto arc AB, sorry. arc AB but falls outside the circle. So by some magic means, I don't know how it had happened, but we let this point go. But as a result of this rotation, point M has come here instead of falling somewhere on this arc. Why could have, I don't know. But it could have happened. What happened with the rest of the arc? Probably these points lie along, but maybe not. I don't know. I put a question mark. But I will show that even a single point could not fly away. Draw OM. Draw OM. 
it will cut the circle at some point n. Actually, it's not really important whether it cuts the circle or not, but if OM but if OM is staying outside the circle, uh, if OM does not belong to arc AB, then OM uh, it's not M, it's it's uh, does not fall but falls outside the circle you know I, if you don't mind I will just erase this because you don't need it. outside the circle at some point M prime if OM does not belong OM if uh, now I will I will write again sorry uh, then this is point M prime, right? Then O M prime will be greater than the radius of the circle, which is impossible. Since O M prime is an isometric image it's obtained as a result of an isometry of OM so it must be OM prime equals to OM equals to the radius Therefore, M prime cannot be outside the circle. Similarly, so we can just repeat literally almost the same proof. So I will just say similarly, M prime cannot. in the interior of the circle of the arc CD can fly away and not land on the arc AB. Hence, every point of arc CD must fall onto arc AB. Therefore, the two arcs will coincide as a result of this isometry. Mm. It looks like a pretty long proof. We have to write a lot of words, but essentially the proof is very easy. Yes? Let's rotate this sector. It's actually this figure called the sector of a circle. Yeah? Until falls onto this sector can arcs not coincide can something ridiculous like this happen no it cannot because in this case the isometric image of a segment congruent to radius will be not segment congruent to radius that's it that's the whole proof but when you start telling the whole story in details it takes longer the interesting question is 
is the converse true? What means the converse? The next theorem would be the converse. Theorem, the converse of the one we just proved in a second. If arc AB is congruent to arc CD, then it follows angle AOB is congruent to angle COD. So now, if you, if you take the hypothesis that the two arcs are congruent, will necessarily the angle be congruent? The answer is yes. And the proof um, will not be so easy. We will require a little bit more knowledge to complete this proof. So we will do this proof later. Proof it later. I would say specifically when read after we have covered section 4.4. About the congruence of triangles. Otherwise, it will be difficult to prove this. You can try, but uh, I always encourage go ahead and try to do it. Uh, but uh, in our class, I will postpone it till we consider the section on the congruence of triangles. That's actually all about angles. That's a whole story about angles. And it's a whole story about angles. And now we can move to the next topic. The next topic will be about now we start real sports polygons and in particular triangles as, as I promised we are considering so called elementary geometry which is the geometry of straight lines of rectilinear figures 